All right, let's start this off, y'all. This episode of the Brokotaku podcast is brought to you by Vagaries. Like a mission statement that screams holistic and intellectual but is completely devoid of actual substance, Vagaries gives you gravity without the mass. Let's see how it works. Check out this weak-ass example. At Technotech, we use the same recipe that my grandfather developed in a secret POW camp and he escaped just long enough to hand off the formula before he was killed by snipers. Ugh, now I'm sad. Let's try it with vagaries. Come on. At Technotech, we utilize the latest and cutting-edge resources to bring you the most qualitative solutions possible with an emphasis on results. Wow, pal, where do I sign up? It works for stories, too. Nobody wants all those details about how your father killed your mother. Ugh, messy. All you have to do is drone on about your ideals and your dreams and what you really want, and everything just works out. So sign up today. Vagaries. Don't say shit. Welcome to the Brokotaku Podcast. My name is AJ. With me is Marcus, a.k.a. Beardless Schmo. Wait, let me do that again. Beardless Schmo. They told me that Rogaine works on your face. Oh, you suck. And Alan, a.k.a. King Kongzilla. <laughs> your uh your your godzilla sound is literally <laughs> they should make a dub it was just some dude making the sound for godzilla hey <laughs> 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 that reminds me of when Faith and I, we were in a, uh, we were looking for a card for Mother's Day or whatever it was, and then they had one of those auto, like the audio cards make sound when you open it, and it was like Chewbacca, and the Chewbacca noise was the worst, <laughs> laziest. <laughs> was it like it was? <laughs> no, it was pretty much. It was. It didn't even have that trill quality yeah. to it. It was a lot like your Godzilla. It was just like ah. Uh, uh. <laughs> I was like, that is not Chewbacca. They did not try at all. There was there was no rolling of the tongue or anything. It was just some dude. That they got like, Danny from uh, accounting. Yeah, to come there's a it. there's a couple places around here that will do like those dinosaur attractions where you walk through and there's a bunch of different like dinosaur animatronics. And I swear, like half of them are just some dude in an office. Like, hey, make a, a sound like a T Rex. <laughs> And that's the sound coming out of the big dinosaur <laughs> animatronics. <laughs> it's terrible. It'd be awesome if there was like a stegosaurus or something. They were like, ar, ar, ar. <laughs> it probably is the Velociraptor. <laughs> <laughs> like what? Is, you don't. Nobody knows what a dinosaur sound. Like. So you could literally like make a, up anything. Like it looks like a dude like taking his shit. A dude's taking <laughs> shit. That was the poop sound. What does a Stegosaurus God. sound like? <laughs> Probably sounds more like a cow. I don't know. If they were lizards, they probably didn't make any noise. Probably sounds like dubstep. <laughs> <laughs> they were birds, so they sound like... They were just having They're a probably party. like, kalukukoo. Kalukukoo. <laughs> what if they talked? Hmm. <laughs> then their tongues would have been more evolved. I say, Jenkins... These plates on my back are jolly right. Man, it's fucking hot. <laughs> Tired of this volcano. It's that big old ball coming down. <laughs> Uh-oh. What a ain't mess the ice age supposed to come soon? <laughs> Why there ain't nothing to eat? <laughs> Have we talked about the show Dinosaurs on this podcast before? Yeah, we've I talked like about we it. Had. I don't know if we've done it on the podcast. I don't know, I don't know if, if we did podcast. it on the podcast, but... It might have been D and D, dude. There's a whole episode dedicated to like the dad getting his like mojo back and trying Ew. to like seduce his wife. Ew, 
Yeah. And then he end up, ends up doing the uh, the dance, like the mating dance that you're supposed to I do with your spouse. That. I remember that too. Oh, yep. God. He did I it in front that. of the baby and made the baby fall asleep. I was like, there's... Oh, weird. The- <laughs> yeah. This is like, I don't know. This is yeah, back in the nineties, so it's like partially innocent, I think. Th- but that show crossed some lines. I th- I feel like <laughs> I don't want to go back to find out what or how many, <laughs> but I'm just gonna say that it did. Oh yeah, it did totally. When you're a kid, you don't know. You're like, ah, eh, this is just funny. And then when yeah. you're an adult, you're like, what the hell? But that yeah. show, yeah, it's on kid. Disney Plus. If you want to check out, relive the creepiness. Nope. It hasn't really aged well. Weird rubber suits. This just seems like a horrible idea. I don't know why we all were just okay with it back then. We like were it like, any it sense. was so impressive. Like, look at the suits. Look how like real they, they were impressive. Or, yeah, they were for the you know for the time. But I mean, imagine if somebody was like, "Hey, man, we gonna do a show, a sitcom about dinosaurs. It's gonna be like a bunch of animatronic." Slash people dressed up in suits being dinosaurs doing family shit. It's like, what? It's like a sitcom, but with like Muppets. Yeah. Odd. Maybe it was uh, because of uh, Ninja Turtles, the Ninja Turtles movies. I think because I think the guy who did Robbie was the same voice as the guy who did Donnie in Turtles Mm. 2. And maybe Turtles 1. But... Weird. Yeah, I, I guess it was like because the Muppet Show was like a thing around that time, and they're like, "Oh, we can do adult comedy." Wait, that was sort. concurrent with the Muppet Show. I think the Muppet Show came before it, but yeah, there was, it the was Muppet all this was like older, Jim but... Henson craze. Like, oh, Jim Henson, you did this Muppet Show. Can you make a sitcom with like Muppet people? And he's like, "Yeah, how about these dinosaurs and they live like normal people." Okay, here you go. Why not? And then the baby. Anyway. The baby makes it all better. Not the mama, not the mama. We got a game, Marcus. What, huh? Did you make a game? Oh, uh, yeah, I made it. Make it it now. Make it right now. Just make it. We'll wait. wait. The podcast can wait. (laughs) It's now or never. So we got a game. It's the returning Isekai meta escape. What? Yeah. I thought it was going to be related to punching things. Maybe. Maybe it is. Ooh, I'm going to punch somebody. You find yourself in a locker room. That's a first. In it. <laughs> right? I'm a geek. <laughs> I mean, you spent most of your time getting beat up in there. I don't know what you're talking about. Acting like you're you're not familiar. This brings back painful memories. <laughs> in it, there are only two lockers and a door. To the left of the door is a screen the size of a tablet that displays three arrows. Slow down. I gotta make a mental map. Two we're lockers, both, a screen, both. three tablets. Okay. Oh my god. Tablet with three arrows. Look, I made this way simpler than last time. So just fucking listen, okay? It's going to be a lot shorter. Just listen. Okay, I'm listening now. Focus. You find yourself in a locker room. Got that. In it, there are only two lockers and a door. Not much of a locker room if there's only two. Is the door, is there only one door? You motherfucker. Okay, just keep going. Keep going. (laughs) Jesus Christ. If you would just listen. Is the door between the lockers? Or... Is it in a state of disrepair? <laughs> is this like a concrete locker room or is this like one of those nicer ones? What color are they? I'm done. I'm sorry. I want Me to. I done. want to be immersed in your escape pod. I'm not done. Keep going. You find yourself in a locker room. Got that. You fucking bitch. In it, there are only two lockers and a door. So it's easy. I exit through the door. (laughs) To the left of the door is a screen the size of a tablet that displays three arrows. An eight inch or a ten inch tablet. Fuck off. (laughs) The leftmost arrow points down. 
The one in the middle points diagonally down and to the left. Okay. The last one points all the way to the left. <gasps> okay. It's a fireball. That's what's on the door, you fuck. On the door is a large button illuminated with a bold letter K. <gasps> the two lockers are both closed with mirrors and nameplates on them. One of the lockers has the name Gearless Joe. The other has the name Nomad. Mm. In between them is a strange analog clock possessing only one hand in the 12 o'clock position. However, there are no numbers on this clock. Only the word December where the 12 should be. So, to recap, two lockers, they have nameplates and mirrors on them. One of the nameplate plates is Gearless Joe. The other is Nomad. There's a clock. No numbers on it. It just has December where the 12 should be. And then there's a door with a big button with the letter K. And then to the left of the door, you have the three arrows. That do the yuck, yuck, fuken. Hurricane kick. Yeah, so the door is a hurricane kick for some reason. I'm going to hurricane kick the door. I'm going to hurricane kick the door. Yeah. The door yeah. or the button on the door? The door and the button. Pick one. <laughs> okay, yeah. Fucking How big is the button? <laughs> the button's large. The button's probably like, it's super big. It's probably like uh, 10 inches in diameter. I hurricane kick the button. Okay. Bang! You hear a noise. The button goes in. And then all of a sudden, when it comes back out, there's a P on it instead of a K. Ah. And then the arrows are pointing the other way. Ooh, throw a fireball at it, Alan. Yeah, I'm going to do a... I mean, can I throw a fireball in this world? You cannot throw a fireball. <laughs> Can you make the the hand motion to? Yeah, do I'm gonna do the hand motion and press the button. So I no. got my 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 palms. <laughs> you don't. You All don't. Right. I open. Can't. The physically can't do it. You try to do it and it doesn't work. Your brain just stops working. Okay. <laughs> so what do lockers? Forever? Gearless Joe. Open and up. Nomads. Can I can you open these lockers? Okay. Which one are you trying to open? Gearless Joe. Okay, so you open Gearless Joe. But you notice something when you see it, you see the mirror and you see that you, both of you guys are just one person this time. You're not separate, <gasps> but you see that you are gearless Joe. You see that in the mirror. Oh. Um, so you open the locker that says gearless Joe, and then you see a pair of punch and gloves in it. Um, okay. Uh, put the punch and gloves on. Okay. Are these like you the gear punching gloves or just like it's just punch? It's gloves? just boxing gloves. Okay. Just boxing gloves. Put them on, turn around, and do the uh, Fei Long style. Yeah, yeah, yo! Oh yeah, it's smart. On the okay. Button. I hit the button. Uh, so you hit the button, but it feels like the button doesn't actually press in. It's mm. almost like you're not strong enough to make it press. Mm. Mm. Can I hadoke in it? You try, you do it, and nothing All right. happens. Open it's the Nomad locked. locker. It's locked. You can't open it. Damn it. Uh, punch the clock. <clears throat> punch it out. Clock it punch out. the clock. Yeah. <laughs> you break the clock. It falls on the floor. <laughs> nothing happens. And then all of a sudden, you see the hand on the clock kind of go backwards just a little bit, almost imperceptibly. It fixes itself, puts itself back on the door, or it puts itself back where... It was knocked down from. Damn. What? Can I go into the mirror? That's on Time the loop? You can't go into the mirror. Wait, no. so run, tell me the clock thing again. It like the fixed clock, itself by, did it like rewind time? It seemed uh, like. It It seemed, it seems like that might've happened. Yeah. Rawr, rawr. Time. Okay. Uh, the P on the door. Is it a capital or a lowercase? It's a capital P. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say that maybe there's something with the mirrors and the arrows and the the letter, but then I mean a backwards P would be like a Q if it was lowercase. 
Anyway, it doesn't matter. The I down was to forward. It's a down to forward on the, mm-hmm. the arrows. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Down to forward P. Uh, and I'm dressed like boxing. No. Okay. Uh, can I charge my punch? I mean, you can. And then punch it again. You do. You're still not strong enough. The button doesn't go in. It doesn't go in. So, is there anything we're missing? <laughs> if I, okay, well, if Excuse I look me. at myself in the Nomad mirror, mm-hmm. do I look still look like Gearless Joe? Yep. Okay. And I got the punching gloves. There's nothing in the punching gloves, nothing else in the locker. Nope. Nothing special. That locker just had the gloves in it. The Gearless Joe locker just had gloves. That was it. And the other one won't open. Nope. Okay, so shut the locker again. Oh, uh, uh, can you I touch this? Was easier. <laughs> can, um, can you touch the tablet? Does it do anything when you touch it? Nope. Yeah, punch the tablet. You can. The tablet's stronger than the clock. It doesn't budge. Mm. Can I hold the clock up to the mirror and see you if can. anything looks? You can. Fun. Can you move the hand on the clock? You can. Ooh, let's do that. Let's move it. Oh, quarter, circle, uh, yeesh. All right, so it's down to forward, but the clock is facing up. Oh, wait, okay, yeah, okay, so move, wait, yeah, that would put it right back where it was. If you did the quarter, quarter circle counterclockwise and then made it clockwise again, it would put it right back to where it was. But I think, uh, I think- Wait, does the P, does the backwards capital P- is that supposed to be like a nine? <laughs> you have no reason to think that it does. All right, I'm gonna <laughs> flip the. I'm gonna flip the clock. I'm gonna push it to the number nine direction. So, would that be September? Okay. Uh, so, do you go forward or backward? Ooh, uh, I go backward. Okay. Now what? Now you're nobody. Now I look uh, at the, see if anything changed in the room perceptibly. Okay. Um, you look in the mirror, and you kind of look the same, but you kind of like see some blemishes on your face, like maybe you just got done with a fight. Huh. But otherwise, you look kind of the same. Okay. Now I'm gonna roll it forward a few times. How many? Six and a half. Okay. Circles so you forward. You go forward six and a half times. You look in a mirror. All of a sudden, you have a beard. All right. I try to, a lot longer. I try to open and the Nomad locker now. Yes. It opens. Booyah. Yeah. yeah. And in it, you see gear. <gasps> Give me that Put gear. it on and punch the P. Put the gear on. Punch that P. And that button gets pressed, and you are out of the room. Booyah. Yeah. Congratulations. We won. That was yes. easier. Mm-hmm. It was. We almost but made it harder. We <laughs> tried as we We made it the right amount we did. Of, of difficult, I think. <laughs> <laughs> we helped you out, Marcus. It was too easy. We made it harder for you. You people are ridiculous. Well, you don't want to make it too short. Or maybe you do. I don't know. Anyway, that was fun. Time to time to punch it, guys. Move your I'm feet. gonna wreck it. Work on your footwork. Don't stay in one spot. Don't stand in front of him. Those were Yuri's. Nope, like uh, a butterfly, sting like a bee. Those were Yuri's uh, tips to Joe when he was training. Uh, so we watched Megalo punch Box punch season him. two, aka Nomad, aka Sad and heavy boxer man. Sad and heavy boxer man. Um, he wasn't really heavy though. His no, situation but heavy, was heavy. Yeah, he well, he was heavy. He wasn't with, a heavyweight. With sadness. It's probably a welterweight. A bantam weight. Bantam's a chicken. Is it? Yeah. That's where that comes from. I don't know if that's where it comes from, but. Yeah. In what in what language is a bantam a chicken? It's a kind of chicken. 
Ah. See, y'all didn't know this chicken lingo. There's no. different kinds of chickens. AJ knows all the chicken facts. There's He's bantam chicken chickens. Game. Deep. There's like rock, Rockwell chickens. There's like interesting. Are there uh, spelled the taste, same way. taste good chickens? Tasty meat chickens? Yeah, those are called <laughs> meat chickens. Hmm. Are you serious? Yeah, you can't just eat like a laying hen. You breed special meat chickens, and they get super fat. So fat, they can't even walk. From the antibiotics. Yeah. Not necessarily. They just get fat. You can feed them corn and shit. And antibiotics. It makes them taste better. (laughs) Antibiotics just just keeps you healthy. I mean, it's just a known fact. It's how we fight disease. The more antibiotics you take, the less biotics in your body. Yeah. I'm I'm zero percent biotics for for years now. <laughs> That's why we don't empower is like Mass Effect because all the antibiotics. Ah oh, shit! The damn government covering up our powers. We could have all been X Men by now. I know. So we anyway, in the world uh, of my hero academia, <laughs> where everyone has a power except Deku. Little bitch. The power of crying. <laughs> so. <laughs> What did uh what did you guys think? How do you guys feel about the Megalo box and the, the season two and how do you feel? What did it make you feel? You both watched the yes. first one, right? Uh no. What? I thought you did. You did I watched part of the did. first. Oh. How much? Like half. And then I watched the last episode. Okay. Which funny enough, so I had to explain this. I kind of did the same thing for season two. Yeah, tell us what you did. Tell us what you did, AJ, <laughs> so we know what well, the hell I, you're Well, I was going short on. on time to watch the entire series. So I started watching. I watched the first six episodes, and then I jumped to episode 12. <clears throat> and the reason I did that was because... I'll get into it in a minute. Um, my, my issue with Megalobox season one was that Gearless Joe was not very likable. And I think I went into the series expecting like an action show where like you'd see some badass boxing matches. And then, yeah, there's going to be like some some shenanigans, some story elements happening around the boxing, but the boxing would be awesome and worth watching. Um, the boxing is not awesome or worth watching. It's very... I don't know what I want from a boxing anime, but it, it's not exciting to watch anime boxing because it's always the same movements. It's like they kind of shuffle around, they throw a punch, maybe they dodge back and forth, and then slow motion haymaker. <laughs> slow motion sidestep. Slow motion the sidestep. The sliding of the Slow foot. motion uh, punch to the rib cage, and then they get knocked out. Like every fight's like that. It's it's just like every time you see it, it's like this is not fun. So right off it being an action anime, right off the bat, because that's not what it's about. Now Megalobox season one, I was like, I I want to like it, but I just didn't. And I got probably six or so episodes in. None of the characters were very interesting. None of them were. I care. I didn't care about any of them. Um. And it was kind of predictable and where it was going. Like the dude was throwing fights. He's like, I don't want to throw fights. I want to be a real boxer. And then he beats a real boxer and then he fights the big guy. Um, and that's pretty much it. The Nomad, I started out not liking it because it's still Gearless Joe. And he's still like not that likable, really. But they throw a twist in and spoiler alert from here on out, um, you think it's going one direction and then it changes directions uh, around episode four and then it kind of takes a completely different direction. And that was more interesting for me and more engaging from a story element. And, And since I, at that point, had written it off as like an action boxing anime and more just like a story based anime, uh, it was more enjoyable for me. So I, Definitely liked season two more. And since I didn't have time, the thing is, though, it's still kind of predictable. So I didn't have the time to watch 
five episodes between episode six and episode 12. And when this comes out, I think episode 13 will be out, but it's not out as of this recording. So I have not seen the final episode. Um, but I'm going to watch the final episode because it's interesting. So where I stopped, actually, I started episode seven. That's when they introduced Mac. And I'm like, okay, Mac's the guy who Gearless Joe's going to have to fight. Gearless Joe's going to do some shit to reconcile with these kids. He'll get back in their good graces. They'll all team up. And then he's going to have to fight Mac. What I didn't realize is that Mac has his own set of issues, which when you get to episode 12, kind of highlights and summarizes what he's kind of been through to get to where he is. So he kind of has his own character arc develop, like starting more than halfway through the series, which is kind of interesting, but also kind of cool. Um, and then that all leads up to the final fight, which happens episode 13, Mac versus Joe. And I assume they'll fight Joe. I mean, I don't know who's going to win. It could really go either way. Um, so, you know, but overall, I, I liked season two much better than season one. For that reason, and the fact that it, it has a couple twists, it has some more interesting characters. I think Joe is a more interesting character this season. And um, <clears throat> it didn't necessarily go the direction I thought it would go. Because once he meets up with the kids again, I thought he was going to like get in their good graces, start training the the oldest kid who wants to be a boxer, and then kind of maybe do another time jump to where he's like, you know, old enough to box. And then they kind of fight their way to the top. But it didn't do that, so that's okay. Because I, I think I'm okay with what it actually did do. So how do you feel about it, uh, like, not comparing it to season one, just on its own, season two? It was interesting because they kept... I kept feeling like I, I was missing something from season one. Like, more than once, I went back to season one. I was like, did the, did his trainer die? And I missed that in season one? No. Um. Yeah, I, I realized that no, that's not the case. This all happened between season one and season two. There's some reoccurring characters, obviously, that you may have some special connection with if you watch season one, especially the kids and especially the, uh, uh, not Lou, but the guy who trained him. Yuri. 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 Um, so there's that. But overall, I think season two, if you if you count on season two to fill you in on the things that you need to know, then you'll be okay. Don't go back and be like, oh, I feel like I missed everything because season two will will fill in those gaps eventually. I do have some complaints about the series that I'll I'll get into after you guys go. All right. Yeah, we'll get there. Marcus, what did you think? Um, So I didn't watch season one at all. Actually, that's a lie. I watched, I think, the first two episodes of season one when it came out. And I remember kind of being excited about it because I, I remember liking the art style a whole lot. Um, it seems like a it was a throwback to late 90s, early 2000s art style. And it kind of has a similar feel to Cowboy Bebop, um, even though it's not the setting isn't really the same. Cowboy Bebop has a lot of different settings, though. So I guess there's a bit of overlap in the episodes where, you know, they're in like a desert in the outskirts of some town or whatever. Um, and that's like the majority of where this, uh, both of these shows take place as far as I could tell from what I've seen. Um, in these like poor neighborhoods that are kind of just in these arid landscapes and stuff like that. So it felt like that visually. So that was cool. But at the end of the day, I don't, I'm not a fan of sports anime. Like I, I don't watch any of them really. And the setup for the first season was very much that it's just like, I'm this character and I'm, I got a goal and a dream and I'm going to get the goal in the dream. And there's a set of circumstances that allows me to enter the mega tournament that I shouldn't even be able to enter. And now I have a guy that I'm going to fight at the end and, uh, beat them and hopefully get the championships. It's like, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I just don't care personally. So it's more of a taste thing. So I just didn't watch the show after the first two episodes. I was like, I feel like I know where this is going. Like you were saying, AJ, there was nothing about Joe that, uh, that really 
excited me or intrigued me. And I hated his hair. <laughs> I thought his hair looked dumb. His and his hair face looks was kind of dumb too. His hair is not amazing. It's stupid. It's like all high on his head. <laughs> it's dumb. It's from getting punched <laughs> so much. His hair grows <laughs> weird because he gets punched a lot. <laughs> so I didn't watch the first, the first uh, series at all. So in watching this one, I did have the same thought. Like, man, I guess there's a bunch of stuff happening that I'm just not going to have any point of relation to since I didn't watch the first um, season of it. But I guess that's not the case. I guess all the flashbacks were created specifically for this show. And I guess a lot of those flashbacks are events that took place after the first season and before the second season, which is a cool approach. Um, you have to like fill in the blanks. So had I watched the first season, it would have been cool to come into this one. Like, you know, why is this dude all depressed and drugged out? I thought he was like on the top of the world. And then you, you, they're unraveling little by little what happened. Uh, but since I didn't have any of that, it was just like the first couple episodes just felt really slow about this guy who was sad and washed up in the drug addict. And I'm like, all right, well, I don't feel any real connection to this. So I'm just sort of watching it happen. And it's not bad, but I just don't care that much, I guess. Um, and then it got more interesting. I only watched seven episodes of this uh, due to time and also Funimation being real stupid. Like it would just not play for some reason. Uh, some of the times I was trying to watch it. So I didn't go as far as I could have. They suck. But, uh, Their app sucks. Funimation, <laughs> fix your app. Why does it suck so bad? You have a million dollars. Go use it. Hire someone who can write an app that works. You're owned by Sony now. Ask Sony for money. God damn it. They can write apps. <laughs> they have one million dollars. Yeah. <laughs> they got exactly. one million in the bank. What are you doing with it? <laughs> Sitting Take on that it. million dollars and use it. <laughs> <laughs> Spend it all on the video yeah. player. Make it better. God. Yeah, so anyway, uh, like AJ was saying, I feel like it got a little more interesting once the turn happens, and it's like, uh, because Joe, who was going as Nomad, meets this guy named Chief, he meets his village of people, ends up helping them out, and then decides through events to start fighting again. So it becomes about him fighting again, reconciling with his past and the people that he abandoned and left behind and stuff like that. And it was kind of interesting. Um and then he's gonna, he was like helping the dude that beat him after he became champion train. So I guess there's a little bit of interest there. And then there's a new guy who fights Mac, AJ, you were talking about, who is a guy who is uh, given a chance to fight again after being paralyzed because of new technology. So there's lots of stuff going on. And at this point, I'm just repeating what happened because like, I really actually don't have a whole lot to say about this show. I just watched it and I'm like, okay, it's fine. I guess I don't have strong <laughs> feelings okay. whatsoever. So I'm sorry for being really boring this week. Well, fuck you. Cause I went, I went, <laughs> what do I you went think, deep Alan? on this one. Um, well, I nice. mean, I don't know. I f feel like, so like season one, I kind of felt the same way. I was like, we never really got a sense of Joe. It was just like, he was the protagonist just because he was. And it was like, yeah, it's an underdog story, a come up story. And like, everybody likes that. It feels good. But it was like, I never really got a sense of who Joe was or why I should root for him. He was just a, a you know, he was just a diamond in the rough. He's really skilled fighter for whatever reason. And like, he wants to be the best, like, you know, everybody can, we've all heard that story before and like, it's compelling enough, but yeah, it was like, who really is Joe? So like when this, when the season two starts and it's like, okay, he's addicted to painkillers and uh shoddy painkillers. They always made sure to say shoddy painkillers. If he had good <laughs> painkillers, it wouldn't have been an issue, but, um, so like he's regretting something. And he's like killing himself slowly. And uh, yeah, so he meets Chief and uh, who like kind of helps him 
kick his his habit and gives him you know gives him his spirit back and and then joe decides to go back uh to the kids he abandoned and try to like you know make amends and get you know find a reason to live i guess and like try to fix what he what he kind of ruined so you got this really heavy uh story and i'm like I, i'm not really feeling it though i'm still not invested in in joe really because i still don't really know him like i like what's his motivation he just wants to be a good fighter um but i f- it's just not clicking for me and like i'm i'm watching it and everything's good like i'm i'm enjoying the show and things are happening and i'm into it but it's just not like i don't know if it's me or the show like why isn't it clicking i feel like everything that they're uh doing is earned but it's just not hitting me like i feel like it should and i don't know why hmm. so i don't I, know I, I, so what do you mean when you say you went deep on this like one? okay so i like went back i read that reread the synopses for season one like trying to piece put the pieces together because they start bringing back old characters right like first is i think you think it's going to go in a whole new direction but it's really just a setup for joe returning and i think that was a good you know that was a cool little arc there's like three arcs in this season i feel like there's like three little mini arcs it's like the first one is joe you know he's in bad shape he finds you know he gets inspired by someone else and he's able to help them and they help him or he he decides to to return home and then it's him and uh sachio and he's trying to to reconnect with them and nobody wants to and so it's like what the hell do you what the hell does he do now everyone like you tell is telling him to go to hell and then you have mac come out of nowhere like here's this mac guy and we're supposed to care about him and he's got a you know he was injured and thought he'd never fight again but now he's able to and like how does this all piece together you got yuri coming back you got the lady yukiko the the tech company lady coming back and it kind of seems like we're just recycling season one again but then like people keep getting hit in the head and ended up in hospital beds and taken out and you don't know if they'll fight again so i just don't know where it's going sorry i've uh i'm not answering your question but i'm just trying to kind of make sense of it all i think that the problem is it is a problem that we've we've kind of iterated a lot on this show is that it's a victim of having too much time to tell a story that doesn't require that much time like if this was a 2 hour movie and it was condensed and packed in and they they hit all the major story points that they could it would be pretty good um but they take their sweet old time telling the story they're trying to tell and it just drags on and it doesn't pack the punch that these things have like spoiler alert episode four when chief dies uh you know because you start out and you're like okay chief is going to be the guy like he's going to be his new mentor he's going to you know joe's going to act as mentor Chief's going to rise to the top and blah 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 then he's like dead all of a sudden and then it, you know the story shifts um, that could be something you could tell in a movie in like 25 yeah, minutes, half an hour, right? <laughs> but because this is a 13 episode series, they drag it across four episodes and you really don't need that much time. And then, uh, I don't remember which episode it was, it was probably episode six or, or so five or six where they're flashing back to the death of, uh, the coach, what's his name? Nanbu. Nanbu. Um, they call him pops. They call, yeah. him pops. they call him pops. Yeah. So they're flashing back to how pops was diagnosed and eventually led to his death and how Joe kind of handled it. Um, they could have done that much quicker too. Cause they had like several flashbacks where it was like, okay, here's where pops dies. Oh, nope, nope. We're back. Nope. Okay. Here's where pops. Nope. Nope. He's not dead yet. Nope. 
keep coming back. So across the whole, you know, 25 minute episode, they flash back several times and it's, you know, I, I don't think that's as, that's being a little nitpicky in my, from, from my perspective, but that's what I'm getting at is that they could have told this story much more succinctly and it'd been a lot more entertaining. The fact that I was able to skip basically five episodes um, and still know pretty much exactly what's going on. I think I missed a little bit with the lady tech lady and the dude with the glasses um but they seem pretty inconsequential as characters so it didn't really matter what you really after is okay you're setting up the final fight here's max motivation here's joe's motivation who's gonna win um and the problem with this show in particular is like you you know you in my in my mind i compare it to like a rocky movie where Rocky's like, he's got a family, like he's fighting for something, like he's got something to lose if he if he gets beat. Like Joe doesn't really have much to lose if he gets beat. He gets beat all the time. He doesn't have anything to lose. And he doesn't really have that much to gain other than fame for a little bit. But he did that in season one. And now he's back in season two. And it's like, okay, if he gets killed, like he's not leaving a wife, he's not leaving kids. Like if he gets killed in the ring... <laughs> he's starting out season two nobody really cares well they they set up the whole thing with uh Sachio and pops or like they you know i'm not sure which episodes you kind of you probably missed some of this but they kind of drill into you that that they were a family like for you know for the purposes of the story they were a family and he kind of yeah, ruined I, I that, that when he left yeah. so so this is what i meant by like i went deep like i really tried because everybody loves this. I went on Twitter and like everyone's like nothing but, you know, good things to say about it. And I'm like, why, why can't I feel that? Like, I want, I want to get excited about this, but it's like <laughs> something holds me back. So I like thought really hard about it and I'm like, well, they keep talking about dreams, but then people keep like failing and getting like beat down and they have to like come back. So like, I kind of think that the whole thing is about they keep talking about the the dream that Joe gave them. Like, I'm still trying to, you know, I'm still riding high off that dream that you gave us. Like Joe gave so many people this dream uh, all these years ago when he became the champ. Um, so I think it's about like what happens when you lose your dream and like, how can you get it back? And, you know, who, who is it on? Like, as they talk about doing what you want and living your life the way you want, but then you've got other people giving you these dreams. Um, so it's kind of, it, I feel like it's getting at this question of like, how do you live your life? Do you chase a dream? Do you let someone else inspire you? Or do you take the, you know, is it only on you? So I feel like there's this, this, this philosophical uh, depth to it that isn't quite coming across in the dialogue because you get a lot of like, uh, and this kind of gets back to what you're saying, how they could have condensed it, AJ. Um, like at one point chief and uh, Joe, like chief is fighting and Joe says to him or no chief is fighting. And chief says to Joe, uh, you're coming home safe. Right. And it's just like out of nowhere. It's just like, why? Are you, what do you mean coming home safe? And he says, you know exactly what your heart desires. And then he says, it's a promise. And I think that was bad translation. I think he meant like, promise me, like you'll go back home and, and you know, get back what you lost or whatever. And there were some other things with like the, the subtitles where it was like they left off a letter or a word and it just, you know, it really, you lost something there because you know, words are important and <laughs> meaning is important, but, but just stuff like that where like the dialogue doesn't really live up to the, the theme that you're kind of trying to convey. They talk a lot about dreams and, you know, living your life the way you want, but it's just talking about that. It's not really, you're not really getting there. Does that make right. sense? It doesn't doesn't hold the weight that uh, it should. In yeah. my mind. 
But that is, that's not to say that I didn't enjoy season two because there's a lot of elements that I did enjoy. I like a lot of the characters, the other characters other than Joe. Um, the Sachi elements I thought were good. Uh, and I thought that, I, again, I, I skipped a few episodes and I did see the episode where Sachio kind of establishes that they're family and that he's he's fighting in Megalobox underground fights and, you know, they're being threatened by the uh, the mob guy. I don't know who he is. Um, so, you know, part of me wishes that the Sachio joe relationship would have led to more Sachio fighting and training. Uh, but it didn't, <laughs> as far as I can tell, and I don't know what happened between the couple episodes I missed. But well, Sachi is a shit fighter; he's not a good boxer, right? Yeah. Um, so I mean, that that's they set that up right away, and I'm like, okay, Joe's gonna come in and coach Sachio and make him a better fighter. Uh, no, that didn't happen. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, there's all, all another thing about the show is like it keeps not doing what you expect to happen because like they set up joe uh making a comeback and then he oh what is it he he throws a fight to save the fight to to save the kids restaurant and i feel like like that was his only redeeming thing in season one was like oh he refuses to throw a fight that's like his uh you know that's where he draws the line and like that's his integrity it's just like okay well that's not much but sure and uh so he 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 throws a fight to save the restaurant And that's when he starts, you know, kind of earning the kids trust back. And like, I thought the Sachio, I really like what they did with Sachio where like, he's, he doesn't forgive Joe. He's not going to forgive him. Um, and like, he's kind of, you know, his life has kind of been decided for him or he's, he's, he's taken what Joe did and like, it's, it's kind of ruled his life. So there's a lot of, you know, a lot of good drama and storytelling with like, okay, Joe's back now. This weight has been lifted. They have a little like spar in the ring and like Joe whoops his ass. And so like, there's this moment where like they're talking while they're fighting and like Joe's beating the shit out of him, but also telling him like, I'm sorry. And it's just like, so there's a lot of feelings there, but then it's all, it's mixed in with this like, Okay, now he's gonna fight Yuri, but oh, you or Liu, uh, who's Yuri's student, but Liu just got, you know, rocked by Mac, and now Yuri's never gonna fight again. He's a, uh, you know, he's got brain damage, so now Joe's gonna fight Mac, but Mac is unstable, and could like, you know, is in no shape. So like, you you keep thinking it's building towards this like, uh, here's a big fight between two you know fighters in their prime but like nobody's in their prime everybody's got problems and maybe that's the point well like yeah i think it is i think (laughs) it's like you know you've got you got a dream or whatever and there's all these things standing in the way and it's like i think it's really about the the choices or the the sacrifices or the compromises you make because like the yukiko you is that her name I'm th- okay. Mm-hmm. That's right. Tr- is her brother's name Yukio? Is are their names like almost exactly the same? I think her brother's Yu Gi Oh. Yu Gi Oh. Okay. That's a but joke. It's Yukio, right, or something like it. <laughs> I think she. All right. Anyway, know, so like she wants to help the world with her tech, but then they keep they keep uh, commandeering it to be used for, you know, military use. And that's what happened in season one with the gears. And this is what happens in season two with the, uh, the brain, you know, stimulation chip that can make paralyzed people walk again. Um, It's Yukiko and Mikio. Mikio. All right. That's what it was. Um, so there's a lot of that and, and they kind of develop these like secondary characters, like Yukiko's assistant, is like um or I'm sorry the uh the CEO guy who like does the he's basically the bad guy. He keeps telling the her to like fudge dude. Yeah, he keeps telling her like fudge the data to uh you know so that nobody finds out that Mac is like his brain is dissolving. And they kind of develop her a little bit like she's morally, you know, compromised and and I'm just like 
this seems a little unnecessary. I think my biggest hang up. But it all. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm just going to say it all kind of combines into this big, like, you know, complicated mess of, of just stuff happening. Right. And it seems overly complicated. Like, you could tell the same story. Yeah more effectively without any of the megalo box aspects of it like the fact that they're wearing like armored boxing gloves basically adds nothing to the story as far as like it does feel like a whole right because oh. yeah having not watched the whole first season i forgot and had to look up i was like why are they wearing this bullshit again well that's like, the I thing it <laughs> like they don't need it like you can tell the exact same story it just have them be regular ass boxers well, well then, I mean, was it necessary in the first season, Alan? Like, did the story revolve more around? It the gear? did because uh, season one was kind of like, I mean, the Megalo box was the the thing everybody was doing, but like, and then Gearless Joe shows up, and like, the whole thing is like he's the real deal, and this this champion Yuri, who you know wanted to beat Joe and wanted to be the real deal too. Um, so like I wanted to beat him fair and square man to man. So he actually had his integrated gear removed and like endured a bunch of pain and, uh, you know, risk to, uh, to get back to his, his natural body. And I guess that's how he, uh, got paralyzed because they don't really explain that. Doesn't Joe start off with gear though? Like what happened? He, yeah, the whole thing, the whole reason he went gearless was to kind of make a name for himself. It was like a stunt. Because he was really skilled, um, but they didn't really have money uh, or support to like get him a gear. He had, like shit gear. Um, so like the yeah, his gear was shitty, and like the whole thing was to get to the top as fast as possible to even have a shot at the at Megalonia, the big tournament. Was uh, he had to fight you know really high ranking people. He only had to win like five matches against these pretty high level fighters um and he you know that combined with uh not using gear uh is how he made a name for himself so that's where the gearless joe came from the promotional art while i like it it's probably some of my favorite art of any anime oddly enough for an anime i don't care that much about um it's misleading because it's that is that really dope image of him like bending down with his hands up in the boxing gloves and he has like the gear on his arms and it's like, Oh, well most of the thing he doesn't even have right. here. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, so that super confused me yeah. not, not having watched all the way through the first season. Cause I know in the first couple episodes, he does have that gear. Yeah. Yeah. And well then okay. he gets, he gets back to it in season two where, cause he gets the gear chief gave him his gear um, so like part of Joe's development finally where like you see what he's about or he has, you know, he has developed is where he, uh, he decides to take this last fight against Mac, but he's going to wear gear in the last fight and he's got this gear from chief that his son helped him make that always protected him. And so like Joe won, you know, they're all worried that it's going to be his last fight. He's going to die or be, you know, brain damaged or something like like Lou but he's like no this, I've this I want to be protected this armor is going to protect me so I can come back after the fight you know either way mm. so like uh, he you know it's him deciding what's important and he kind of admits like oh I I I was thought I was uh you know fighting to to save pops but I really just did it for myself that's all I've ever done is fight for myself so he like admits to this like big flaw that's been his motivation all along. So like do you know what I mean? Like there's these things happening you're like, "Oh yeah, I respect that. I appreciate that." But like why? Just why is it It all sounds really right. good on paper. Yeah. Well, and and I'm even watching this show. It's it's not like um I'm sitting here waiting for the episodes to be over. I burned through like, you know, 10 episodes in like 3 days. Like I'm enjoying it, but it's just not like when when it's over, I'm like, this is good, but it's not great. I think it's anime great. It's not like great, great. I just think Joe in general kind of a shitty character. <laughs> like if he was more enduring, yeah, like that would be, that would make the show better. But like he doesn't, there's not really anything, any great qualities about him that make him 
make him a good protagonist. Because it's not like he's like super good guy. Like I guess he does help the kids out, but like he's just not interesting. And and my biggest issue, he's like, not. He's pretty dull. To take a, a little different uh, approach here, the the back to the the boxing aspect of it. Like I was excited when Megalobox first came out because I was like, "Ooh, this is gonna be like sweet fights. They're gonna be doing some badass moves, hitting each other super ass hard." And like they kind of do, but like it doesn't <laughs> super. It doesn't ass feel hard. any heavier than like any other <laughs> boxing. Like the, I guess there's no like real context for it because like how was a regular boxing match look in this show? Okay, now put this armor on, and like everyone's supposed to be like faster and stronger and hit harder. I never got the sense that it was any different, like animation wise. Yeah, yeah. If it's well, the the issue is if you watch actual boxing, which I don't watch a whole bunch of it, but I'm exposed to it a little bit just because, um, like I like MMA, so I like pay attention to combat sport news now, and that getting being into that kind of ruined, like watching anything that's supposed to simulate boxing or any combat sports because combat, like the way that you watch that isn't the same way that you watch action in an anime or like a, an action movie or a martial arts movie. Um, because it, it's just not clean. It's, it's, it's just different. You can't sim simulate it correctly. Um, so it's never, those things can't ever really be about the action. It's more about the competition. And, um, I think that like, I never was a fan of, um, or I never got into Hajime no Ippo, but a friend of mine likes it a lot. And he showed me some scenes from, from those shows. And the best scenes aren't when like sweet boxing ha is happening. Like they're doing cool moves like slips or, or whatever. Um, it's always like what's going on in, the opponent's heads right at the time. And then what's fun is when they finally make contact. So it's not the fact that you're trying to watch a scene that's choreographed as much as you're just rooting for a certain character to win or lose. And I think that may be the appeal um, for shows like this and other sports anime in general, um, especially when you get two characters that, are rivals or they're both really strong and you just want to see them fight and you want to see who's going to come out on top. Like I'm spoiled now and it doesn't matter because I probably wasn't going to finish this anyway. But the last, the place where I left off, Mac was going to fight Lou. And even though I wasn't super invested, I'm, I did find myself wondering like, huh, I wonder who they're going to make win that because neither one of those guys was the main character. But you know, whoever won that belt was going to be the next was going to be the person that Joe fought. And that's kind of what's exciting about real combat sports is the whole jockeying for position and rank. And at least in um, mixed martial arts in the UFC specifically, it's all about rankings and they make fights based a lot of the time based on like who's ranked who. So you'll watch a fight going like, all right, whichever one of these two guys win, they're going to have the opportunity to fight this other guy that like won his last three or right. something like that. Um, so I think, I think maybe that's an element that people like, uh, but you know, that's the whole sports anime thing anyway. Like if you're not into that competition aspect of it um, and the, story outside of it isn't really that compelling like you know i don't know maybe it just doesn't hit quite as hard because the show is very straight it feels like it just tells all of the events as they are and there's not a lot of style or there's not a lot of like really hard drama or hard conversations that happen like there's there's no like in any of the arguments you don't feel them as much as you just see them happen right you know, when people have disagreements, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm experiencing this kind of happen, but it's not drawing me in. It's just like, all right, he's mad at him. He's going to help him. Here's a redemption arc. That guy died. That's kind of sad. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. It's almost like the difference between reading 
a reference book about events that happen versus like reading a narrative where you are following a character and feeling what that character is feeling. Does Hajime no Ippo have any relation to Tomorrow to Joe? Are they unrelated? Um, I don't think so. This, I think Megalobox is actually the first season was created as an to pay homage Tomorrow's to. Tomorrow's Joe, yeah, right. Like I just wasn't sure if they were, if yeah. Hajime no Ippo and Tomorrow's Joe were any 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 way related. I'm not. So, I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, I think this has more relation to that. Well, not this second season. The second season I read specifically that they wanted to take it in a more original direction rather than kind of copying the template from Tomorrow's yeah, Joe. You're right yeah. though about the. Uh, you're more in the head of the fighter and less watching the fight actually play out. And I think that was what was frustrating for me when I first started watching it because it's like I want to see some cool animation some cool fights and like even just like a brief like google search of like a hajime no ippo fight like those fights like hit hard <laughs> and like they actually look like fun to watch um but the the joe fights are just like i'm gonna i'm gonna get ready to punch and then they wait 30 seconds while they have an inner monologue throw a punch pause 30 seconds have an inner monologue and then dodge and yeah, it just it's it's so choppy and it doesn't feel satisfying watching a fight when every thirty seconds they're pausing to flashback or dialogue or something. It's not a good way to deliver a fight, especially in a boxing match where it's like nonstop. Yeah, yeah that, I, that's the thing though. I don't think that's the I, point of this show. I know it's not. <laughs> I realize that. I mentioned that before, but like starting out when you if you're expecting like a boxing action anime. It's it makes it harder for me to get into when you don't get that at all. Yeah, I've never watched like a sports anime really, I don't think. Um but like the the boxing matches, they felt like just standard anime like kind of procedure to yeah. me. It was like, yeah, they trade blows and like one person does something that makes the other one kind of like, oh, they're strong. And then the other, you know, the other person fires back or, you know, lands a blow. And the other one's like, I, I'm i not going to underestimate him. It's just like the classic Dragon Ball kind of thing. And then, like, there's this one dramatic moment where, like, you know, the person has their sees their opening. And then it's like a one hit knockout but or whatever. Even... And then sometimes they they throw a twist in there we're like oh i this was supposed to be my my epic counter move and he he dodged it and what happens now um that all felt kind of like standard for me yeah but what were we gonna I, say well Jay? we watched uh an episode of initial d over the weekend and i was like i don't know it's a racing anime and i'm like this i had no expectations of that show but it actually ended up being really interesting and engaging watching this race go down. Um, and I think it's because as they're kind of dialoguing and as they're watching, as they're kind of going through like their technique in their head, like you're, you're watching the action kind of unfold and things are actually happening on screen and it's interesting. And, they, and the, the things they dialogue about are like actually relevant to what's going on. They're not just like, oh, I'm about to get hit. Let me flash back to that time I was training with, pop and he gave me an ice cream bar after i finished or something you know something stupid like that um you know it's actually talking about like real technique that could be used and that made it more more fun to watch because it's like oh wow this is you know somebody actually put effort into the technique being used to complete this race and i don't feel like you get that with with megalobox i think you just, just get these crazy whatever is in their head at the time flashback and sometimes it's that technique i'm going to do a different move but and it just still doesn't hold the weight that i think it should or that i would expect from a, a boxing match because it's so fast you know you, you can't you can't pause every 30 seconds to to dialogue and monologue about you know what you're going to do like because you have to do it like every split second in a real match so you know just make it play out differently to make it more exciting. 
and less slow and choppy like it feels. All that is to say, I don't dislike the show. I still think it's, especially season two, where my expectations were kind of set properly. And I think the show set the expectations better than they did with season one. Um, it, It was more entertaining and more engaging than the first season. So even if you have not seen season one, I still, I think I still recommend season two if you're interested. It's not going to be one of my favorites for the year, but um, you could do worse. Yeah, I, uh, I like. I think I think it's worth watching. I think it's, uh, and just that everybody, all the good things everyone has to say about it, like it's worth checking out to see if it if it does that for you um here's another example of kind of what i'm trying to get at where like it it feels like it's earning it's it's uh you know it's salt or whatever but not really uh so like there's a lot of uh what am i trying to say there's a lot of uh like I'll have it in a second. I can cut this part out later. I need to consult my notes. Oh, they're always like waxing poetic. So there's a lot of like poetic stuff happening. And then like you look at the titles, like everything's in Spanish, um, which like kind of made you think that he was going to be in this kind of other land for a while, like helping these this group of immigrants. But that's really just, you know, the beginning and part of the, the mini arc that makes him want to come home. But like the translations of these titles are like, uh, you can't erase the voice of the voiceless even after the applause end. Mm. It's just like, that doesn't fucking mean anything. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like past defeat is with the omen of good fortune. I mean, yeah, maybe those are, maybe those are just bad translations, but it's like, and then you got the ending song, which I want to talk about uh, too. But it's like, so you've got this really, this really powerful imagery, like all these like awful things are happening and people are going through these things. Um, and there's all this symbolism and there's like these themes of, uh, of like losing your dreams, but it's still not like nothing makes up for like the good writing and like the writing doesn't really live up to it. And I think that's why it kind of falls short for me. But uh, but yeah, that's just that's what I mean by I went deep. I'm just like, <laughs> I feel like I'm reaching for something that just isn't isn't there. Like I want to feel it, but I can't. It's very uh very strange. Marcus, oh, did you guys feel that at all? I like- I mean, like I said, I I've been uncharacteristically quiet this episode because I just didn't have any strong any strong impression. This is just like it was happening. I didn't hate it i was only annoyed because i didn't like it enough to want to watch it even though it wasn't bad but it was just annoying because it's like all right i have to watch more of this and i'm not super motivated to it also didn't help that i was super fucking tired when i started it just because like at the at the beginning of last week like i had took like a long hike in the sun on sunday and it just like wrecked the first part of my week. So I was just super oh, yeah. tired. Um, so like the first episode felt like a fever dream. So I don't know if it was just me being like kind of whacked out or if the first episode actually was weird. Cause I was watching it and just thinking to myself, I don't know what's happening right now. It just felt like he was, ex- and maybe it's, maybe that was supposed to simulate like what his mental state was since he was all fucking drugged up on painkillers. But I felt like scenes would just happen and people would be talking and then he would punch somebody. And then all of a sudden he would throw up like in the bathroom and it would go from one thing to the next. So the first two episodes, I was like, I don't even know what this is. Um, and then he meets chief and then a story starts happening but then I didn't even really like that story that much, even though I did like Chief as a character. That's probably the only character in it that I genuinely did like. Um, but yeah, 
I don't know. Chief is cool. I don't know. I didn't want anything from yeah. this. It was, I knew we were going to yeah. watch it, and I knew I probably wasn't going to love it because I wasn't even motivated to watch the first season. Well, so, try it out. And, you, and what you just said about season two was how I felt with season one. That's why I didn't finish it. Um, and it, hmm. I'll I'll go to the last episode because I want to see who wins that fight. But I'm probably not going to go back and watch those episodes I skipped because it, uh, it feels pretty inconsequential at the end of the day. So why is it called Mega Low Box? That's stupid. I don't know. <laughs> is why the is gear called Mega Low or something? No, nope. it's just what they called the sport. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Mega low. Mega, okay. Megalonia. The, this uh <laughs> Stupid. the the ending song, the E the E D. What does that uh-huh. even mean? Ending Ending, that's all. Just E D. Yeah. Ding. Ending. O P is, is two open. words. And O P is opening. The ding. The D is for D is ending. Why isn't it the E? <laughs> I don't know, okay. man. I don't know. It's, the, it's just how it is. All right. It's whatever consonants of the syllables, the first two syllables. Anyway, <laughs> the first time I heard this song, I was like, like it hit me, right? Like it hit me in the way that I wanted the show to hit me. It's a good but song. It's a very good it's song. It's like, I don't know. I've listened to it like 200 times now. So like it's kind of lost the effect, but like at fir- first few times I'm like, this is one of the most beautiful goddamn things I've ever heard. And I I just didn't know if the, if anybody else felt that. No, it's fantastic. I liked the music a lot in the show actually yeah. to say something yeah. good about it. Yeah. Mana, Mana Bua or Maban, Mabanua, Mana Bua. He did the, the soundtrack for the first season and now he's back with this. So I guess somebody else wrote the song and the lyrics, but like, I never knew I wanted uh, a Japanese person's or someone singing Spanish with a Japanese accent. Mm-hmm. But you like, got it. But dude just like crushes it. And yeah, I was just like, where did the song come from? I need more things. Yeah, it's like very this. it's interesting that they went with that. I want to say Mexican, but just to be safe, I'll say Latin American. Yeah, um, yeah. Theming with it, with both the opening and the ending, and the titles being in Spanish, and um, even the artwork of the credits. I have no idea what that art style is called, um, but uh, but that was interesting, which made me think that the show actually took place in a Latin American country at first, but everybody has a Japanese name. So that's not true. So yeah, only thing, the only thing I can think is just that, um, Mexico has a very, very strong, uh, boxing tradition. So maybe it just comes from that. Yeah. And it's just funny that like that, they set up this theme and this, this vibe that kind of only applies to the first four episodes. Even the title Nomad is like, well, he's only a nomad really in the first yeah. half of the season. And then he goes, then he goes home and, and he tries to, you know. And everybody calls him Gearless Joe anyway. It was like two people called him Nomad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't yeah. Even... And it's just, yeah. He was this, bo- or it's like, he spent most of his time being called Nomad in the part of the, in the part of his life that the series doesn't even cover. Because, yeah. like, mm-hmm. even the flashbacks are before he was called Nomad. And then the show is mainly about him not being Nomad anymore. Yeah. So he has, yeah. like, however many years of being Nomad that the show isn't even about. So it's a funny, it's funny that they branded it that way. Yeah, it is. It's very strange. But it's like, it's almost like they had it and they wanted it and they didn't have anything else. So that's <laughs> what they went with. But that's the thing, like the kind of the problem with the series is that it goes in like three different directions. Yeah, it does try to do it's a like, lot of things at the same time, line. and it like kind of everything else suffers for it. Like if they had stuck with Mexico and then also flash back to how he got there, um, that might have made sense, and then kind of redeem it all by the end. Yeah, I was just but, gonna say, like, if you want to talk about him being a nomad, like have some flashbacks to like, you know, how he felt. Or like right. how he was feeling after, like right after he left, 
and like how you know how he even how he got into like the painkillers and all that like right. that's kind of the story i want to hear well that's um, a story you'll have to get in megalobox three I, yeah reno roroni <laughs> reno mad um yeah i don't think i have anything else me neither. Nor do I. Cool. We're going to watch more anime. Hey, Alan, I'll throw this up. out there. Yeah. We're going to watch for next time. So it's in recording. Can't go back. Oh, geez. Gurren Logan. Oh, no. Well, we're not watching that because next time we're doing Smorgasbord. Oh, shit. Another ah, Smorgasbord. Smorgasbord. All right. Should we do a retro throwback Smorgasbord where we watch a bunch of old shit? No, the whole point of the Smorgasbord is to be relevant and talk about things that are currently <laughs> that up, up and coming. What's coming up? I don't know. We got to find out. There's lots of stuff. There's always stuff. Ask the internet. Tell us Tell us what you want to see if you're at all engaged with what we're doing here. <laughs> um, we'll tweet. Yeah, we'll, we'll tweet and they will respond. They'll respond right, to yeah, our tweets next... and not listen to the episode. Yeah, jerks. <laughs> one Piece? Thank you. They got One Thank Piece coming? that do, though. They got My Hero Season 5 coming? Tokyo Revengers? Is this right? Yeah. Well, Tokyo Revengers is already we watched. A thing. Oh wait, my hero watched Tokyo Revengers. We did that last smorgasbord. Well, what the frick? This says summer 2021. Are we not in summer anymore? No, we didn't do Tokyo Revengers for last smorgasbord. We we're gonna do an episode where we, oh, we watch were... those, and then we didn't because yeah. I didn't want to watch that or oh, right. Mars Red. And we ended You're up. Right. What did we end up watching instead? Something shitty. Probably. <laughs> I think we did Yasuke. Instead. We did Yasuke. Then we yeah. did, really, Castlevania. No, I think that was the the yeah. episode before Yasuke, because we knew we were going to watch Yasuke. Now the one before Yasuke was Demon Slayer movie. What the now hell was Yasuke? That? Damn it! Okay, we talked. Well, during the Demon Slayer movie one, we briefly talked about Mars Red and Tokyo Revengers. Oh, that's yeah, that's what it was. Oh, because I ended up being able to see instead. Demon Slayer last minute. Right. Yep. You're right. That's what it you're was. right. All right. Never now mind. that we've solved the mystery of our own corrected. horrible memories. At <laughs> any rate, um, yeah, we got to do a smorgasbord. I'm going to watch Gurren Logan again, whether y'all want to. Start or watching Gurren Logan, Ellen. We're going to talk about it. I already started it, watching it once. I got to start again. We, we watched over the weekend. We watched the, the recap as, episode and there was a bunch of cool shit. In there. Can I just watch the so recap like, right. episode? No. Well, the, there's a recap episode, and then there's like five more episodes after that. So if you want to start at the recap episode, I feel like that's sh- probably well, the best here's, case Well, here's the problem. <laughs> here's the problem. The recap episode is kind of like the uh, end of Evangelion, where you have to have seen it for it to make okay. any sense yeah. to you. It's more of a reminder, it's not, not, as a, fucking... not a condensed version. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Yeah, you won't be able to like get a real good grip on what happened just by the recap okay. episode. So I'm not I'm not gonna push it. I'm just saying the little like watching that over again, I was like, I need to rewatch this show. Cause I'm pretty sure I haven't watched it since two thousand nine mm. and it looks like it held up well. And I need to give it a good shake because like I it. gave up after like three episodes. Yeah, I should give it a fair shake. Um, well, I got to go before I pee my pants. Okay. Um, All right. Well, let's wrap it up. Thanks for listening. Uh, we love you. Show us some love because we loved you and that's how love works. You got to give it to get it. And I gave it. So come, come on with it. Come get it. Come give it. AJ, what hit him with the, the docs, hit him with the deets. Hit him with your best shot. Hit him with the best shot. Yeah. Uh, yeah, check us out on the Twitters at, at Brokotaku, at Brokotaku Cast. It's Prime Day, guys. <laughs> well, when this goes live, it won't be Prime Day anymore. And you missed Big all those money. you missed all those awesome anime deals. But there's always Just more. Just think of the deals you missed. There's always more. In fact, there's going to be a bunch in July. So keep following. Keep the keep it locked, as they say in the industry. 
Uh, check us out on <laughs> YouTube where I am posting more episodes over time and on uh, iTunes where you can click a five-star review and say how much you love the second worst anime podcast on the internet. Uh, Soon to be the third worst because we are moving on up. Moving on up. We got big numbers, baby. (laughs) Double digits. We're into double digits now. (laughs) (laughs) Double digits. Double digit downloads. And join us next time when we talk about Gurren Logan. Just kidding. Something else. Anime smorgasbord. Anime smorgasbord. Quarterly smorgasbordly. Summer 2021. Summer. I can't wait. Coming summer. All right, and that's all. So I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. Uh, And we'll catch you on the other side of this recording next time. Bye-bye. Sayonara. Peace. Oh, yeah. Well, well, well.